Welcome today to the first of the Leap Updates online updates. We're going to be doing a series of these because this is a way that you as a Leap practitioner can stay up to date on all the current things in the field. And as neurology is progressing so rapidly, these new ideas are evolving and new concepts are evolving every year. So this is a way for you in the comfort of your own home, you can now stay updated in the most recent develops in neurology and the most, leap, uh, most recent formats for these neurological conditions that will now make you a better and more effective leap practitioner. So today I want to talk about hypoxia and recover from traumatic brain injury, a protocol to reboot idling neurons shut down by hypoxic events and facilitate recovery from traumatic brain injury. The first thing I want to discuss is why is hypoxia so important to brain function? Well, it's about neurons. And neurons are unique cells in all of the body. Every other cell in the body has a way of making energy, called ATP in the cell, without oxygen. And, and uh, only neurons you know, have no ability to survive without oxygen. Because neurotransmission is such an energetic task, requires so much energy, the body therefore moved out all the lesser and slower forms of making energy and just packed the neurons for all of uh, the Krebs cycle respiration, which is the one that makes the most energy. Every molecule of glucose in Krebs cycle makes 38 molecules of ATP. Every molecule of glucose in glycolysis makes four molecules of ATP. There's no way you can run a neuron on four molecules of ATP per molecule of glucose. Therefore, those older machinery got pushed out over time, and now it only has Krebs cycle respiration, which is very efficient to make a lot of energy to neurotransmit. However, the problem is that when it loses oxygen, and therefore there is no way to make ATP, the neuron will eventually die. There were two models. One was the old model, which was that when this happened, when you lost oxygen, you went into hypoxic stress, the neuron was going to die. It was just going to con continue to transmit, 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 dead. But that's, the neurons aren't quite that stupid. So now there's a new model of hypoxic stress in neurons. And low O2 threshold turns the neuron off. It stops neurotransmitting. It's not dead. It's not broken. It's just turned off. It's just like in your laptop that when you are in a low power mode and, and you get to 5% battery, a little thing comes up and says 5% battery, 10% battery. And if you don't plug your uh, laptop in, what does it do? It doesn't die, it just turns off. And neurons do exactly the same thing. They go into low oxygen mode. In low oxygen mode, neurons can survive for long periods of time as long as the original event that caused the hypoxia ceases. And then they, but the thing is, they are in low oxygen mode. They need to be rebooted to become refunctional and to begin tr neurotransmission once more. However, if the hypoxia has gone on too long, even the return of normal O2 levels will not reboot the LMN neurons as they seem to get stuck in this low oxygen mode. Neurons stuck in low oxygen mode can remain in this dysfunctional state for long periods, even decades. In neurology, these LMN neurons are now called idling neurons, as if it is they were indeed idling, just performing minimal functions to survive, but unable to support neurotransmission. While well, idling LMN LOM neurons are not dead. They are dysfunctional neurons that do not neurotransmit and thus appear dead or damaged to normal assessments and evaluations. Live LOM neurons appear the same to MRI and CAT scans as live neurons, neuro neurotransmitting neurons, and thus there's no evidence of damage. However, there is dysfunction detected by real-time measurements of brain function like EEG, an apparent contradiction. So let's use a computer uh, uh, analogy with the situation we have we're facing with the neurons in the, in the body. What happens to your laptop? You're using your laptop, you're going along, and all of a sudden, little 10% battery, you keep on typing, boom, shuts down. Now, you don't go, oh my god, my computer died. You instead say, oh, i got to plug my computer in. So you go over, you plug it in, and normally you would just wiggle the mouse, reboot, and now you're back in the document, you're back in typing away. But sometimes, if you've let it go a little too long, you weren't paying attention, it was shut down hard, you plug it in, wiggle the mouse, nothing happens. So you now know that you have to either do one or two things. Either <clears throat> wait a period of time for a little charge, residual charge to build up in the computer, or you can just hold the off button down for five seconds and then reboot from the bottom. 
So now it reboots, but unfortunately you've lost your document. Now you've got to go find your document. Okay, and so this is very much equivalent or analogous to what happens in neuron. If low oxygen is there and it's not too severe, it goes into this LMN, uh, low oxygen um, a mode of processing, and it stays, these neurons stay like that for a period of time, oxygen returns, and boop, reboot, just like you wiggling your mouse, and they're back online, you're in your functioning again. But if it's been a little more severe hypoxia, it's gone on a little too long, now when oxygen returns to normal levels, it doesn't reboot. It sits there in these idling neurons, just waiting for more oxygen or something to reboot them. Thank you.